Okay, hello to whoever's listening. Uh, for my first video on this channel, I'm just going to run through uh, a blog post called uh, Basic Neural Network in 11 Lines of Python by a guy called Ion Trask. It's a really good tutorial. I recommend you read it through it in your own time. But at the moment, I'm just going to go through it from memory because uh, that's what Trask recommends. It says if you really want to solidify knowledge of uh, basic neural networks, try and do this thing in... Uh, one go from memory. So I've done it a few times and I got to the point where I'm reasonably confident that I could do it live in one run through. I'll show you, this is the blog post, a neural network in 11 lines of Python. And this is what we're sort of going to be dealing with. We've got a, a matrix here of values, uh, inputs and output. And basically we want the network to learn that a one in the first column will perfectly correlate with a one in the output column. So we don't really care about the ones in any other columns. So there's two ones here, but we still get a zero. So we need to train the neural network to uh, n really not care at all about a one in the final two columns, but only care if it sees if a one's in, in the uh, first column. Okay, so let's go get started. First, we need to import NumPy, which is a matrix library for Python. Uh, pretty much essential if you're going to be doing any sort of machine learning neural network work in uh, the Python program language. Next thing we need to do is import matplotlib pyplot. Uh, pyplot. I'm just going to be using this to sort of plot the data in the script to show you what's going on as I go. Okay, yeah, the first thing we want to do is get those uh, inputs, uh, these ones here. We want to get these into the program. Um, and also what you should note is that there's four here and you could call these our four training examples. So we're training the neural network. We're saying it's got one example with these values and it gets a zero. Second example, it's got these values and gets a one. Third example, we've got these values, gets a one. So it needs to learn the relationship between inputs and outputs according to these four training examples. And uh, this is a very simple, simple model. So it's actually, this is enough information for it to learn that if it sees a one in the first column, it should output a one. So let's go ahead and get our uh, training data, which is typically labeled X. So let's create a NumPy array. And I don't exactly remember the, I've got it here, is that these are our matrix inputs. Let's shunt that over. There we go, that's our training data. And the Y is our output. And this is also part of the training. So we, we're, giving, we're going to give the network the answers for these four training things. So for the first one, we've got an output of zero. Second one, we output a zero. But because in these two, we have a one in the first column, we will output a one. And as you can see here, we can also plot this training data. Let's plot we're going to use the NumPy's H stack function, which is a horizontal stacking of the matrices. So we're going to stack the Y to the right. Oh, and also I've forgotten here, because this matrix is a one by four matrix, we need to make it a four by one matrix because this matrix here is a four by three matrix. So if we're going to stick it onto the right, it needs to be a four by one. So we're going to stick that uh, the answers to the right of the, the training data. And we're going to go give us more arguments. Phenomenal equals 10. Color equals what? In gray, I think. Yep. Okay, and then plot shows. So this is going to make it output it to the screen. Save that and run it. Okay, here we go. Um, here is the basically the training data represented we got black means zero and white means one. So in our first three, uh, two examples, we've got uh, an output of zero because they do not have ones in the first column. But these two here, they've got ones in the first column, so they output a one. This here is the output column. Okay, so we've seen what our data looks like. This is super simple, like this isn't gonna blow anyone's minds, but um, if you wanna learn how very basic neural network works, um, and learn some of the key concepts, you'd probably best go through something this simple and not tackle uh, anything ridiculous like machine vision or anything like that. Okay, so the next thing to do is 
we'll get our sigmoid function. And I won't say too much about this now, but basically it's used in training the weights of our network. So we have all the neurons in the network have uh, weights associated between them. So that's what our, basically we're going to train the weights of the network to ignore all one values that are not in the first column. So that's basically what we're going to be doing. So this, this helps with that. Uh, so Nonlinear, we've got an option, deriv equals false, I think you need to hold to. If deriv equals true. So if the derivative equals true, we're going to use the derivative of the sigmoid function, which is x times 1 minus x minus x. Otherwise, return the normal sigmoid function, which is 1 plus, oh, 1 plus mp exponential to the power of negative x. I can plot this, I'll actually plot the, uh, the sigmoid function for you to show you what it looks like, because the, uh, the nature of the curve is what makes it so useful in this application. Uh, so I'll get some, some data, so mp uh, a range. So basically you can get some data from between 5 and negative 5 uh, with a step value of 0.2. So it's going to give us a bunch of points to plot this graph. Uh, go plot, actually no we don't need that, we don't need to plot. Uh, the x-axis data, so that's our input, and we're going to apply the non-linear function, the sigmoid function, to the x-axis data, which is going to be our y values. And then if we do that, it should work. Oh no, I need plot show. Sorry about that, I forgot that. Plot show, so that's going to output it to screen. And this is our sigmoid function. So basically you see when you're in the middle, you've got uh, a steep slope. And at the extremities, uh, so negative 5 and 5, the slope flattens off. Uh, and this is going to be uh, useful, which I'll explain a little bit later when we're training the weights. Uh, so that's that, I'll comment that out now. And the next thing is... Oh, we got, oh, yes, that's right. We're going to be using random uh, numbers to initialize the weights. So it's a good idea to initialize your weights to random values because there are certain uh, values you could put the weights at that would make the uh, the neural network not function properly. So we're just going to use random values. So you should seed your random values in NumPy first. And we're going to first create the... Uh, Synapses, we call them. They call the synapse the weight. Um, same thing. Synapse, weight, whatever. Uh, so we're going to initialize the weights for synapse zero. So it's the first layer of synapses. And then to random, random. And we want it to be between three and one. And it's going to minus one. That minus one at the end is just to give us a, a mean that's closer to around zero. It won't be exactly around zero, but it's uh, generally useful. Trucks, Trusk says that you can look this up to have your mean around zero. Uh, okay, so now with that, all that set up, we're ready to go into the main bulk of this script, which is a for loop. In range. Let's go 15,000. So basically what this is going to do is it's going to go and repeat this 15,000 times, which means we're going to go um, input the trading data into our network and get the results and then compare those results with the actual uh, output that it should be, which is our Y data. And we're going to, according to the, the error rate, which, okay, so the difference between what our network outputs and the, and the actual output that it should be, we're going to update the weights or the, the synapses in our network. And we're going to do that 15,000 times. Like that's a somewhat arbitrary number. I think Trusk used uh, 10,000. You could use 5,000. You're going to get better results with more. But I, I assume you could use far less iterations and still get a result because this is quite a simple exercise. So the first thing to do is called uh, forward propagation. So we're going to enter our data into the network. And the first layer of our network is the, so there's the inputs, it's our input data. And then the second layer of our input of our network, which is, I think it's a two layer network actually. So this is the final layer, the output layer. We're going to apply uh, God, dot L0, so the inputs to the synapses. So this here is your input, and we're multiplying the inputs uh, as a matrix multiplication with the weights. 
So this, so this is the really the meat of the neural network here. So we need to have our network ignore ones that are not in the first column, and this is what we. So these weights need to be uh, arranged in such a way. They need to be uh, the numbers need to come out in such a way that if you see a one in the second or third column, we don't get an output. The network doesn't care. So we've, that's what, this is really what we need to change these these uh, synapses. So we're going to run it. So the first time we're going to get probably some bad values because we just use random numbers for the first synapse uh, initialization. So we're going to ask ourselves how bad did we do? And uh, we're going to call this the error of the first or the first layer, layer one, which is actually the second layer. So that is to go, we want to find the difference between Y and the outputs. So that's basic. This is an element wise matrix subtraction. So one in each column minus uh, one in each row minus the row that it's uh, corresponding to in our outputs. And now this is the update step. Um, multiply. So how much we missed by uh, slope of the sigmoid. I think it is sigmoid or the nonlinear function. So here we are back with the sigmoid. So we want to find how much we should update our network by. And that is going to be L delta. So L delta is what we're going to say. Uh, if it's large, which means we need to make a big change to that particular neuron. And if it's small, we need to make a small change. So we've got our errors. And we're going to uh, multiply our errors by the derivative of the sigmoid function. So that's why we set true here. That's true because we want to use the derivative. I've made a mistake here. And this aspect of the network is back propagation. So we're going to say, okay, how much have we missed? Have we missed by a lot? And then we go ask ourselves with the uh, output, were we really confident? Like if the network output is something around like 0 0.4, 0 0.5, and the actual results should have been zero, like, okay, so they were wrong, but they weren't super confident or the network wasn't super confident that it was uh, actually going to be one or zero. It didn't really know. Uh, whereas there's other cases where the network thinks that it was, uh, say, it, it wanted to output 90, point, point 0.90, but the actual results would have been zero. So that was really, really wrong. Um, and we really need to update the network by quite a lot. In other cases, you'll have the output was 0.1 and the actual output should have been zero. So it's only slightly wrong. And if it's only slightly wrong, we only make a small update to the network. So. That's how this sigmoid function comes into play. I'm not doing a super good job of explaining it because I'm trying to remember how to write this thing and explain it at the same time. But I uh, yeah, recommend going back to the uh, to Trask's blog post or looking up the uh, the ideas of backpropagation in general just to see how this all works. So that's really the, the was the meat of the neural network right there. That's the update step, and that's super important. And now we've got the delta. We're going to actually update our weights. Uh, so back to the synapse level. And the first layer transpose, we need to do an ink one delta. And since we're doing uh, a matrix multiplication of the first layer transpose with the uh, delta values and we can't we have to use the transpose because otherwise you'll get um, incompatible matrix uh, dimensions and you won't be able to multiply so basically we're, what we're going to have here is we're going to have a change to the synapses we're going to have a change to the weights and they will be uh, changed in such a way that they'll make less of an error in the next iteration uh, and get closer to the expected value and if you repeat this you know, over and over again 15,000 times they'll get closer and closer and closer and closer and they'll converge upon the actual correct uh, output. So that is it. We've updated the weights and I think we're done. Let me just see if I get any errors. No? Okay, so go print output. And then we just want to print the matrix, I think. So we want to print our output layer. So this is going to show us after all that training. Uh, 
for example one, what does it think the output should be? For example two, what does it think the output should be? Well, for example three, what does it think the output should, output should be? And for example four, what should it, does it think the output should be? So that should be zero, zero, one, one approximately. So if we see that now, here we go. Okay, so we've got, in the first example, it's predicted a very, very close to zero number. So it's gotten correct pretty much there and correct for the second, close to zero. And for the last two, it's gotten very, very close to one. So we've approximated the, uh, to a very, very high accuracy, the relationship between the one in the first column and the one in the output column uh, in, well, I've used 47 lines of code minus the space, but it is really quite an efficient way to uh, write a tiny little uh, network. So Trust did a great job doing that. But um, I hopefully this has been useful to see me run through it. Uh, I think it's good that, yeah, I actually did, didn't make any mistakes, I don't think. So I've pretty much got it down. Um, there's obviously a long, long way to go from this example to what the guys at Google, Baidu, Facebook, you know, guys at Carnegie Mellon are doing. Um, but hopefully this is, is uh, if you practice this one over and over, you'll at least have the, the basics down pat of what is involved in training and building a neural network. Okay, what we can actually do now that we've finished uh, and show that we've got actually something interesting happening is change our inputs after training and see if we can get the correct output still. So, so after we've uh, trained the network, we will reintroduce some new data and then we will see if we get the correct values. So let's change all of these now to one in the first column and zero. There you go. So now we've got ones in the first column, so we should expect to see ones for every single uh, output now. Uh, so here we go x and we'll go assign x input to x. And then we'll see with the weights having already been trained in this range here through these 15,000 iterations, we'll see if we can get the correct output now that we've after the fact changed the inputs. So let's run this again. There we go. So you can see that we've got confident, I think this should be one output for every single training example. We can keep running this, we can show it to zero and we can see that now it was output